<laughs> Hello folks, welcome to the NetCruiser RC. I got a new RC in the mail, direct from GP Toys from Guangdong, China. So let's open it up and see what it is. Now they told me what they were sending me ahead of time and I was pretty stoked about it. This looks awesome. Whoa, that is cool. 126th scale, I believe. Four wheel drive drift car. It's got a 130 brush motor, aluminum chassis deck, a really nice computerized radio, cool graphics on the body. Let's get it out of the box. We've got your transmitter wheel behind there, but the body graphics are shown well. And it's in some, it's in some funny, somewhat Chinese English. WRX Drift Shark, the most wanted drift shark ever. Enjoy drift moment. RC ready to run 126 scale, 2.4 gigahertz, four wheel drive, lithium technology, 18 minute extended playtime. This will be my second GP toys. I also have and reviewed the Lucton S912. On the mail packaging, this one was referred to as the S918, though it doesn't say that anywhere on any of the packaging or on any of the advertising for it. Hard plastic drift tires. Let's get this up. Whoops. <laughs> All right, check this out. This is one of the nicest looking ready to run transmitters I've seen ever. I mean, we'll see what it feels like, but so far so good. LCD screen is cool. I mean, the plastics feel, yeah, kind of, kind of low end, but the design of it is really, really nice. Holy wow. And this will be the USB charger and a little screwdriver. You can get at the batteries without the screwdriver. So the screwdriver must be for working on the car. Here's the car. Wow, bright red anodized chassis with an FCC ID on it. Interesting. Complies with FCC GP Toys designed by Yeg Incorporated. It is Rojas compliant. Wow, also interesting to see. These cars are super impressive. Both, you know, GP Toys, WL Toys. Why are these companies not at a huge big box store like Walmart? Walmart is full of new bright, really low end, non hobby grade RCs. This stuff is cheaper than that and way better built way better built the shell is lexan and we'll look at that later it's uh somewhat of an austin looking design but definitely a knockoff not unlicensed body but still a cool looking one and here's the car wow this thing's got some rigidity to it with a stamped aluminum deck nice little lipo battery that you can get at this thing's just like a little chunking down tent scale really awesome it has everything it even has double a-arm suspension That feels like air-filled shocks. Yeah, this thing's really nice. It's Philips or Starhead hardware, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I don't know why, but hex heads cost more. Like you buy any low-end hobby grade RC, they're all Philips head. So apparently hex hardware costs more to license or get or something. ESC and receiver all in one. It's got some ports there on the side, your on off switch. And under here is the little 180 brushed motor. And it looks like half of the chassis almost in the center is taken up by the servo. This looks very similar to another vehicle that I just saw CCXRC show off. And uh, yeah, this one, the S918 seems very comparable to that. This one is a 126th scale scale though, and I believe his was a 128th. Right on, let's power it on, see if it works. Get some batteries in the transmitter and see how it goes. There's actually a protection film on the body, so I'm gonna peel that off. And while I'm peeling that off, I'm gonna quickly throw a charge into the battery and then we'll take it for a little spin. The battery is a 400 milliamp hour 2S little lipo sack. So you just peel back a little corner, get a little edge lifted up. I'm sure a lot of people just end up leaving this film on because it is a little hard to get started until it gets probably so ripped up that it's really ugly and then they figure out how to start peeling it off. Seems to be a very thin film though. It's hard to get started. Finally got a good start. All right, once you get a big section going, then it goes easy. But yeah, this is a heck of a process. I'm gonna come back. I've been recording peeling this off for three minutes. I'm only halfway done. All right, we finally got the film off. That probably took another 10 minutes to get it all off. There was one really hard part right on the very top of the roof, but I'm glad I was able to get it off clean because look at what this says. It's the World Stop Racing Cup. What's stop racing? I haven't heard of stop racing before. So the transmitter takes four double A's and interestingly, there's a little plastic spacer. All right, let's power it on for the first time. Whoa, that's a lot of blue. That is a lot of blue. 
check out this transmitter and then as soon as you move the wheel then it rates your so there's zero 100 and then probably for throttle too yeah oh and it's the <laughs> the miles an hour is your throttle input so you can see just quickly in a gauge how much throttle you're you're putting in and there's a bunch of buttons. I'm going to have to read the book about what all these buttons do. But this is a very nicely designed transmitter. No antenna poking out. If you are a one-hander, you probably can do it. It's not comfortable, but it can be done. Wow, nice little transmitter. So these are your sub-trims for throttle. These are your sub-trims for steering. The long press on one of these gets you into uh, calibration trim mode. And the vehicle is on right now. So it is proportional steering. Not a lot of throw though, not a lot of angle, but enough. Yeah, it's, it's drifting. This vehicle runs off of the balance lead, off of the 2S balance lead, so you never plug in the actual battery lead connector to the vehicle. When I look at this, I always think this is the rear, but the little bumper is on the front and the big bumper is on the rear. Let's throw the body on and take it for a little spin on the concrete floor. Works mint. <laughs> Park it. It's hard. Oh, we need more steering. We need more angle. Now, to, to me, I think I want more steering angle because when you're not drifting, this is its turning circle. This is how big of a circle it takes to turn. That's, that's huge for a car this small. Once you get some momentum and on throttle and the rear end starts to kick out. And then you can get some nice sweepy drifts going. But you have to be very light on the steering. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, oh, that was a good one. We got one good one. There we go. Tagged it. There we go. Oh, that needs way more angle. Needs wise fab. If you have this low pile carpet, you can definitely still drift even on this. It'll catch a little bit, but you can you can do it. All right, so that's the Drift Shark. I really like it. Look at how much dust it's kicked up. Smells smells kind of warm, too bad you don't have smell of vision Definitely cooking in, break, definitely breaking in those brushes. Oh yeah, she's cooking. Um, I don't know how long that was. That was a fun little session. I have no idea how low the battery is, but uh, we could pop it on a checker and see. Uh, I'm definitely gonna look at trying to give this more steering angle because it certainly could use more throw in the steering. So I'll look at doing some mods for that, but out of the box, in this price range of between 50 to $100, you know, I don't think you can go wrong for something like that. That's fun. Really nice build quality and the radio. The radio is awesome. All right guys, so if you enjoyed this or you learned something, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you wanna talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Drift Shark, 126 scale, GP Toys, check it out. One very nice thing about this car is that you can just charge it while its battery's inside. The lead just pokes it through the front fender and you can charge it via USB without even taking the battery out. Just always keep a watch on it, but you should do that anyway whenever you're charging a LiPo. So all the parts, how to disassemble, how to work on the whole car is all printed out for you. Definitely hobby grade vehicle.